Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about replacing this broken 80 gallon hot water tank with a new style equipment, a tankless hot water heater. And in this particular case we're going to talk about an Atmore 27 kilowatt. However, this should work for any tankless hot water heater. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of background on this 80 gallon hot water tank. Uh, it's electric. Uh, I'm not sure how old it is. Uh, we were looking for a date code on it. Cannot find a date code. However, what's happening with it is uh, it's starting to show some rust. It's got some rust in it on the bottom. And uh, but once or twice a week, we have to reset the top uh, element uh, so we can get hot water. Uh, this particular tank is run by a 30 amp uh, 240 volt electric uh, connection. This Atmore 27 kilowatt tankless hot water heater um, is operated with three 240 volt 40 amp circuits. And of course, like I said, there's no tank on it. So uh, later on, we're going to open it up and I'll show you what's inside. As you can see, it's not that big. Um, and we will discuss how we're going to uh, connect it to the wall and how we're going to wire it. A couple things we need to do when we start this is we, we're going to need to attach this to the wall. And we're going to have to run uh, three cables, three electrical cables, number eight gauge, from the tankless hot water heater back to our circuit panel. We In this house we have a 200 amp uh, supply and um, like I said we're going to be installing three 40 amp circuit breakers so that's 120 amps just for the uh, hot water heater alone. This Atmore 27 kilowatt hot water heater only measures 16 and a half inches wide by 14 inches tall. Amazing what we can do nowadays with equipment. How does a tankless hot water heater work? You have a cold water input here, the blue, and the hot water outlet here, uh, the red cap. When a, someone turns a hot water faucet on, or a shower, water starts to flow through the unit. There's an electronic board in here that determines that there's water flowing. And so when it determines that there's water flowing, it turns on the heaters. And it's got three heaters on both. And these the water flows through these tanks. It gets heated up and then comes out of the tanks. It comes down through to the outlet. This, is, this area here is where we're going to be tying our uh, power to the unit. So we're going to have three number 8 gauge 40 amp circuits connected here. So what makes a tankless hot water heater a good deal? Well first of all with an 80 gallon hot water tank no matter how much we're using the water, if say we're not using the water, say we're gone for a few days, the the we're constantly keeping 80 gallons of hot of water hot. So as soon as the temperature drops below a certain threshold, the tank starts heating up the water and brings it back up to whatever the tank is set for. With a tankless hot water system. We're never heating up the water unless we're asking for hot water. So that alone should provide us a huge amount of savings uh, in electricity costs. So for instance, in this particular house, we have one shower, uh, two sinks, a washer machine, and a dishwasher. So the, the big areas of hot water usage is the shower and maybe the, the clothes washer. However, I'm sure many people nowadays either wash with cold water or lukewarm water or, or some uh, 
area of that, you know, not really using hot water. Um, and then as far as the sinks go, so, I mean, it's, you're not using super hot, hot water. Uh, a dishwasher, we're going to put in as much hot water as we can. Uh, and that's, but that's not that much hot water. And how often do you use a dishwasher? I guess it depends on the size of your house. Uh, for instance, in this house, we use it every two days, three days. So it should be a big savings in electrical costs to run the tankless hot water heater. Now, if we were professionals doing this, we would probably take our 80 gallon hot water tank out first and uh, do all the other work um, after that and get it up and running in, the, in one day. But uh, since this is, you know, more of a small project, um, we'll, we'll, I'll be working in steps. So, you know, I'm going to put, put the, uh, install the cables, the electrical cables, and mount the unit on the wall behind this particular hot water tank. And then once I'm ready, then I'm going to remove the hot water tank, cut back the pipes, the uh, inlet and the outlet, and attach them to the unit. And once I've got the water attached and there's no leaks, then I will then uh, connect the electrical to the unit and um, turn it on. So it'll be interesting. All right, so I'm gonna attach the unit to the wall behind here, or on this part of the wall, move this electrical cable out of the way if I can. So it'll be in this area so that I can, my inlets here, it'll come down and connect up into the bottom of the unit. And then this is the uh, hot water behind all this foam. Uh, that'll get cut back probably up here someplace and um, then connect it to the bottom of the unit over here. So uh, because of that, we're gonna run the electrical cable. The electric is on the left-hand side of the unit. So I'll probably run up on this particular floor joist and go, it's about 35 feet to the circuit breaker box. Uh, so I'm gonna go up on this floor joist and go shoot across. And then we're gonna drill some holes in the floor joist and do a straight shot into the um, circuit breaker box. And then we're gonna shoot across here. And you can see there's a suspended ceiling in this area. So we have to push up the, the, the uh, insulation and we're gonna come across. And then this is where all the excitement happens. Our electrical panel so we're gonna come in here it's kind of dark sorry about that we're gonna drop down here and we're gonna come in now and here's this here's our circuit panel so in order to run the cables I made a template to drill the holes in the beams in the uh, floor joist you can see there that this one is not complete yet i got two more holes to finish that's the last set last two holes here we have the two three holes so we're one for each uh, cable one for each cable one for each cable and one for each cable then we're running the cable across the floor joist will staple it up and we're going to come across here and come over to the water tank and uh, we will be putting a piece of plywood on the wall there and the cables will come down uh, to connect up to the new unit. So uh, here's the uh, my template. Basically that goes right right up into right up totally up into the floor joist and then uh, I use a Forstner bit to um, drill the holes so it gives you a nice clean hole right there Let's see if we can get a better picture of that right there all right 
We will continue now with uh, running the cable, stapling it up after I finish drilling those two holes out. Well, we're back and uh, we've run the cables. We finished the hole up here, the two holes, and we ran the cables through all the floor joists, keeping them nice and clean and straight. Okay. And then we transition over here and you'll see that they're all stapled and I'm trying to keep them straight and clean no uh, turns twists clean running through the cables are about 35 feet long and we're going into the here's the laundry room this is where the hot water heater is located will be the new one will be located here too behind the existing one and as we continue uh, we come all the way over and we've run our cables. We use a, a keep a little uh, extra length in case we need it uh, so that we have something, you know, have plenty of cable to work with. You'll notice I also labeled them at each end uh, just in case. Um, we also mounted our two by fours to the wall here and we're going to put plywood up on that uh, here's the plywood we've painted the plywood okay now i want to talk to you about the staples we used this is the staple that we used this is a typical staple for most wiring a little bit bigger staple um, the number eight gauge wire is pretty wide and even though it's stranded wire it's pretty stiff the uh, the normal staple has a size of one inch long half inch wide which is too narrow for the uh, eight gauge cable the next cable the next staple the yellow staple is 9 16 inch wide and the legs are one and a quarter inches long it almost fits but it doesn't then the white staple the one that we used was uh is one in is, i'm sorry it's 13 16 inches wide and it's one and three eighths inch long legs which you need to hold a pretty stiff heavy cable in place so you can see here how they uh, hold that in place. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to mount the plywood to the wall. We're going to put the hot water heater, the new hot water heater mounted on the plywood. And uh, then we're going to run the uh, electrical cables into the new hot water heater and into this circuit uh, breaker box. So we'll be back after we do that. And we're back. And I'll just show you, uh, we got the board mounted. Right there on the wall. And now we're going to uh, put up the new hot water heater and attach it to that board. All right, we'll be back. Well, we're back. We've got the new hot water heater attached to the wall right there. And you'll see these, we've got uh, hoses for the uh, inlet and outlet. This hose here is the is the hot water outlet, and it's a shark bite hose. So all I got to do is cut this uh, with a tubing cutter, and then this just slides into place, and the connection's complete. And the same thing with the uh, inlet. Um, not sure exactly where I'm going to go with it. I want to I want to put it here. Uh, no, maybe I'll have to get a different hose. Maybe it's too long. Um, 
this hose would go would go up here someplace but if I was going to do that I'd have to move the the shutoff valve up to make it fit so um, probably makes sense to get a shorter hose probably cheaper because I just soon keep that shutoff valve there and uh, so that's where we're at right now uh, so the next step will be to shut the water off cut the tubes the tubings remove the uh, hot water heater out of the way connect up the uh, the water to the new heater and connect up the electricity uh, on the heater and in the circuit breaker box all right so uh, we'll be back all right we're back I've uh, removed the old hot water tank and here it is uh, tilted on an angle trying to get all the water out of it uh, the drain valve is way at the bottom so you know it's kind of hard to drain it fully with the drain valve all the way at the bottom um, you can see you got some water on the floor we'll talk about how we got that on the floor uh, the new hot water a heater is mounted on the wall and connected we don't have the electric electricity hooked up yet but we've got the water hooked up um, these stainless steel tubing have shark bite connections on them right here so all I had to do is cut the pipe clean it with some memory cloth and slide them up into place the same with the uh, cold water inlet it's the same setup here now you remember I did say I was going to try to keep the uh, hot water I'm sorry the uh, shut off valve and it worked it works fine but I couldn't get a good radius on the tube to make it fit properly so I, I got a new um, ball valve and that's a sharp bite also so it made it real nice and easy just cut the tubing, push it up in place, a little uh, extension on it, push that up in place, and everything's all tight. And there's actually water in there right now. And as you can see, there's no leaking. The difficulty I had was that because I had to take the shutoff valve off and that was in this place here, I had to shut the water off to the whole house and that is at the main uh, located at the front of the house and when I went to shut it off it the handle never stopped turning but uh, it did shut the water off um, probably about 95 percent so what happened is as I was cutting the uh, shut water, the, the the water shut off here out. Um, there was water leaking, and that's where some of this water on the floor is from. It's from some of that. Um, but I was able to clean the copper tubing and slide the new one in place, and uh, everything's been turned back on now. So the next thing we need to do is um, we're gonna take the cover off of the heater right here and we're going to run the cables in connect them up and then we will uh, connect up the cables into the circuit breaker box and then we will turn it on check it out all right i'll be back see you later hot water see the steam Well, back, we've got it wired in. You see the three circuit breakers at the bottom here. This one, this one, and this one are for the new water heater. We'll come over, we'll come over to the water heater. We got it wired up. Um, I don't like the way the electric cables went in, gonna have to neaten those up somehow or other um, so one of the things we got to do now is we need to turn 
some faucets on and then we can turn the power on to the hot water heater. So I've turned the hot water on on the kitchen faucet here and now we're going to go down back downstairs and turn on the uh, heater. So here we are. Now we're going to flip the breakers. Here's this breaker, this breaker, and this breaker. And we'll come over to the hot water heater. And right now it says off. So what we want to do is they say to turn it up to 118 degrees is the best spot for it. You can change it to something else, but they recommend 118. So we're going to bring it up to 118. 118, whoops. Kind of touchy. Maybe because it's already heating up. There, 119. And let's go upstairs and see if we got any hot water. Oh, we're going up the stairs now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got hot water here. Oh, we can see the steam. See the steam? All right. You see the steam flowing. All right, very good. So one of the benefits of this new hot water heater is uh, the amount of space it takes, which is hardly any. So all this space that we have where the other hot water tank was, once we clean all that up, we could put a shelf there if we needed to. More storage space, more junk holding. Uh, well, and as you notice that we got the water off and the display is off. We'll have to see how that works. If, uh, if someone's taking a shower or someone's using the hot water, if the display comes on then. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this and hope you learned something from it. Leave your comments below. Uh, I look at all the comments and I will respond to any questions you may have. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care. See you in another video. Bye.